call the gentleman over at Sportable. 800-323-7745 and it's extension 180. That's the service department. Anybody there can help you. Hey Justin, hi, this is Toby Knight. All right, man, thanks for picking up. Uh, Justin is with um, Varsity Scoreboards. He's the manufacturer and would be someone that you would want to talk to, okay? Hey, Justin, I've got the scoreboard turned on. I did put some numbers in it, but do you want to have us reset the scoreboard and start from the beginning? How do you want to run it? Uh, yeah, that's fine. You right. can't do that. Just uh, hold down that button. That's like it stops. We'll just hold down that green reset button. Um, it'll take us back to the home menu. Yep, so once we're there, um, let's go ahead and uh, turn the controller off. Alright. So, um, something to note here, let's go ahead and uh, we can power the controller back on and something you'll see that it'll display on the screen will say uh, discovery, then a number of devices. Nine. Nine devices. Okay. Uh, which is correct. So there's a total of nine de devices or scoreboards essentially that it's picking up here. Um, from what I had noted previously with the installer is uh, the one of the devices is the middle school gym, uh, which he informed me was adjacent to the main gym. Um, so we had a, we had set up a network. What we'll, we'll get to in a second. Um, we had already set that up to run that scoreboard independently, and the other um, eight quote unquote devices that are in the main gym over there. So. Um, what we're going to do from here, so it'll go to home menu, play game, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we'll press enter on play game. Enter's on the uh, far bottom right. And from here, we should have the option of probably main gym and middle school gym. Yeah. Okay, so for example, you know, if we were wanting to, uh, you, you would see these same options on the middle school gym if you were to get on their controller, but um, since we're running the main gym right now, let's go ahead and click on that main gym. I'll load up for basketball here. It's already set for eight minutes. Okay, yep. Um, now, is that what you guys run for um, uh, your quarters? Yeah, for varsity. For varsity. Okay. Um, so what the, the controller can keep two preset times uh, for the game clock, but also for the shot clocks in here as well. Uh, excuse me, you guys don't have shot clocks. Yeah, you do have shot clocks. All right. Um, so if we press that yellow button that says set clock at the top of the keyboard, mm -hmm. it'll pop us up in the set clock menu. Now, if we press the up arrow when we go to edit game time two, and we press enter, that'll allow us to set the second preset time. So instead of, I don't know if you want to set that to six minutes, if you do that for JV or what you guys do for, uh, you know, JV or middle school, whatever. Um, so if we wanted to set up that time here for uh, JV to alternate that from varsity, we could do that. Um, if that's not already preset up, I can't recall if I had done that with the install or not. Um, so. Once the uh, clock and everything is squared away, it'll default to eight minutes there because that's what we have it set up to default as. Uh, we got always we can change that if needed. So it was set for six. I set it for seven. But it never showed six or seven. So what do we not do right? We have to go back to set clock. Okay. Yeah, press the uh, press the set clock button. Um, then if we go up to edit game time two, then that changes the second preset time. So what's the edit game time two value set to? Seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay? All right, now press the enter key. And now when you press that yellow set clock button again, it'll, the first thing it should pop up says use time one eight minutes, correct? Yeah. Okay, now if you press the down arrow, it'll say use time two, and this is where it should have the seven minutes. Okay. We're not getting seven minutes yet. Start over set clock. Enter. Seven minutes enter again. They don't do it. Yeah. You gotta find out. How is the set to? It's, it's, it's set, it's set but how do I get it to put? How do I get it to to, to time two to the game time two to display on the clock? What's on the display screen right now? Eight minutes. But I, no, I on the on the seven. display screen is seven minutes. Oh, it's seven minutes on the Edit display game screen. game time two seven minutes. Yeah. Where we are. 
Okay. So if it says uh, edit game time to seven minutes, that's fine. Um, that's allowing us to change the, what we have that time set to. So let's press the enter key, and now what's on the screen? Eight minutes. No, one, two, three, two, three minutes. That's for one, though. It has eight minutes, and it has a one under it. Okay, so it's set up for the, the normal game here. All right, now if we press the yellow set clock button, it'll pop up initially on the screen, use time one, eight minutes. Right. When we press the down arrow, it should take us to use time two, and that should have our seven minute value. Yep. There you go. There you go, you gotta hit down, okay. All right, so. And then press that, and that'll change the clock value to seven minutes. So up is to do the presets, and down is to actual set it. Correct. Yeah, up at the up arrow when you're going to the edit game time two, that changes the preset value. Uh, so just to use the time two, you press the down arrow, go to use time two, um, and that's your preset value time. Okay. Okay. Now, something else we can uh, check here is the shot clock settings. Um, what do you guys, per, probably, I guess, 30 and 45 on the shot clocks? Yeah, they said 45 now. Yeah. 30. 30. Yeah, I figured it was 35. 30. 35 or 30 and 45 is what uh, most regulation stuff is set to now. So um, I believe that should already be set there by the default. So if we start the game clock there by pressing the black switch on the upper top corner on the right, I'll start the game time down, and then we can we should have the gray toggle switch for the shot clock plugged in the back of the controller as well. Correct? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so this uh, that little gray toggle switch there is how we um, operate the shot clocks. Um, you notice we have the run and stop switch on there, which will you know run and stop the shot clocks. We have the reset time one and reset time two functions, um, which allow us to toggle between the two times as needed. So with the game con with the game clock counting down, we can start the shot clocks. Um, and you'll see that'll simply moving it to the run position will start the clock for whatever value it's on. Um, so once we've loaded up here for a game, um, the first thing that you'll do is you're going to input your uh, player lineup here. So you'll notice that on the home score and the home tab and the guest tab, each of those has a number two, the number two key, which is beside the plus one. Uh, that says player in slash out. That is how we will load in the players, uh, the starting lineup here. So if you press that, let's say on the home team score, uh, home score tab, then that'll allow you to manually input your, you know, six players or five players you guys have um, as needed. Do I, Go ahead and fill that out. I hit player in. Yeah, and then enter the number. Mm -hmm. Oh, then put Their the number, number in. Yeah, 20, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's how you load the players in. Now, um, you... Your initial thing, okay. because you don't have any players loaded in, it's not a substitution, you're just a loading your initial in. So once you enter a player, it'll prompt you to enter the next one. Now let me know, uh, once you're done with that, I'm gonna go over some uh, substitution aspects. So presumably this is on the, uh, the home team here. So once we've got all our five players in, um, let's say, all right, we pick one random player and we want to take that player out and sub in another one. So we press that player in and out button again. And then it'll prompt you to select the player. So let's say pick one, pick a random value of a player that you have loaded in. Okay, then put the number of the player in. Correct. And then press the enter button. And then you would put your other one in. Okay. So you're, you're going to load your initial five in. Uh, but then if you, there is a way that you can do a mass substitution as opposed to having to manually load each of these players in. So if we hold down that number two button for the player in and out, you'll see it'll prompt you to substitute all players. So that way if you're just taking everybody off the court and putting five new players in, instead of having to manually take out the five players and input new ones, if you do this mass substitution, that allows you to take all those off and it's a lot quicker and easier to do that. Sure. So once you've loaded your players in um, and we're back to the normal game operation screen, Whenever you go to put in a point, uh, let's say if you press the number three that the home team made a three-pointer, it'll prompt you to enter the player that scored that point, and then it'll associate that on the stat panel. Anytime that you enter a foul, it'll, uh, you know, whether that for the 
home or the guest. Um, it'll prompt you to enter the player as well. It'll briefly display it on the bottom of the scoreboard, but then it'll calculate it over there on the stat panel for the corresponding player of how many fouls they have. So. Okay. What if you make a mistake and enter three and then realize it was just a two? How do you back it out? The, uh, the undo key... Um, should be able to do that. That'll undo your flash function. But also, the if you look, the minus one button uh, for the home team or the guest team, whichever one you're scoring, um, will allow you to subtract it from the team score there. But if you press the undo, it should allow you to go in and change that value. What's the what, what would you use the player stats button for? That'll display the information um, that's on the stat panels there on the display screen of the controller. Um, that's generally going to be used. Uh, you guys won't really use that function because you guys have the stat panels to track that information. Um, but for someone that did not have stat panels like you guys have, they could manually load it and track it inside the controller. Um, but you guys don't have to worry about that because you have the stat panel to display that information. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay. Correct. Position. But if you do do that in the middle of the game, it'll it'll just essentially put the information that's on your stat panels there in the on the display screen of the controller for Adam. All right, just set the clock. Let's say you got to reset the clock. Let's say with the clock at five oh three. So. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to go over that while we were at the clock settings here. So if we press that set clock button again uh -huh. and we press the down arrow two times, we should find an option there that says enter game time. Uh huh. Edit game time one. Okay. Well, there's a difference between edit game time and enter game time. We should see an option. Well, it may just say ENT oh, game enter, time. It may I not say enter. enter game time. I see you. Yeah. So enter game time. Now, what the enter game time function allows you to do, this allows you to put in any value that you want to change the clock to without changing your preset time one and time two times. So let's say if you need to set the clock to five minutes and three seconds, you go to enter game time, but then, you know, 503, press enter, and that'll put five minutes and three seconds up on the clock without messing your preset eight and seven minute times. So warm ups, what, it'll say? Be, it'll about 20 minutes. Set to the 20. second when it's under 60 seconds. When it's under 60 seconds? Yeah. All right, so what about this scenario? Two minutes in the game, got a timeout. Is there a timeout? Can you enter like the 30 seconds for that timeout and then after that expires, it goes back to the two minutes game time? Correct, that is correct. Um, so I'll, I'll walk you through that here. So if you look at the top, there's that yellow button that says timeout. Let's go ahead and press that. Oh, I see, and it's already set for a full timeout and a 30. Yep. So you just pick which one. You'll have a minute timeout and then a 30 second timeout. Now, if we scroll down further in that timeout menu, there is going to be an option in there that says timeout display. Uh huh. Okay. Now, with the timeout display enabled, what that will do is while you have a timeout enabled, um, so. With the timeout display turned on, instead of showing the game clock while the while it stopped, it will display the timeout value, um, time running of the timeout. Once that timeout is done, the horn will sound and it will go back to what the game clock was set previously. And so, like I see, sometimes in a game, they end a timeout mm -hmm. before the full timeout over. So what would I, what would I do? Just hit timeout again and then go back to the game clock? Yes. Yeah, your, your warm-up times and stuff, you can use that inner game time function to manually put in, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or whatever. Uh, whatever you're setting your warm-up time to without having to mess up your preset times, so that's what the inner game time function allows you to do. Oh, that's oh, this is a question. So during the game, we don't use a shot clock. So how do you, like, take it from being displayed, have it not displayed? Why are you playing? So, like, for example, like during a JV game or something? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, so to disable the shot clocks, um, all you can you can do there if you hold down that option button, I'll take you into the options menu. Uh -huh. We'll find an option there that says shot clocks. Right. And just turn that off, and that'll disable the shot clocks. Oh, okay. Now another alternative, um, and this really just depends on you guys how you want to run it. Um, 
we could set up, so you know when we turned the controller on initially, we had our options here between the main main gym and middle school gym. Some people will build a secondary, a another option from there. Can you go over the turning off the shot clock and what happens? Sure. Okay, so uh, once once the normal game clock and stop is stopped, if we hold down that option key, that'll take us in the option menu. Is that right, Justin? Are you explaining how to do a different setup? For that main yeah, setup. you want to because sometimes, as opposed to going in there and changing that setting uh, between a JV and a varsity game, some people rather build an additional network, uh, which is that first screen that we came across there where it said select network. Some people will like to build a network there uh, for JV stuff that does not include the shot clocks as opposed to having to you know, go in there and change it. It's totally up to you guys. Um, if you have no problem going there and simply disabling the shot clocks, um, that saves your choices of options there on the initial load up screen. Um, you just have to make note of whenever you're going to go to a varsity game, just got to go in there, you know, re-enable the shot clock, so then you'll be good to go. The um, I know the controller that was ordered with the uh, the new scoreboards and stuff there for the main gym that does have a um, a rechargeable battery pack installed inside the controller. Um, so in theory, if you just have the one power cord there between the two controllers. Uh, you, you'll get approximately eight hours out of a full charge of that battery. So let's say if you just needed to charge that, that battery up overnight, and then once the battery is fully charged, you'll be able to run that control without having to have that power cord plugged in. And you could simply take that over to the middle school if you didn't have the battery in that controller. The battery is installed in the back of the controller underneath the uh, uh, compartment lid that's got a red sticker on it. Quick question. How you change the period? Mm -hmm. The period, when I press the period button, it's only going one and two. Mm -hmm. Do I got to preset that or something? I don't know. Yeah, we can go ahead and change that setting to four. So um, hold down the option button. There'll be an option there. It should say like period slash games. Uh -huh. Scroll through there eventually. Get to that center and change that to four or whatever. Oh. And then once the, you probably already noticed it, but yeah. at the end of the quarter, whenever the clock runs down to zero, the horn's going to sound, it's automatically going to kick it over to the next period. Oh, it automatically kick it to the next period? Okay. And if not, I can yeah. just press it, I, I see it, just press it and it go one, two, three, four. Yeah. Correct. All right. Hey, in case you got any questions, he wrote your number down already? Yeah, sure. Um, so my direct extension up here is 180. Uh, my name is Justin. Certainly, if you have any other additional questions, uh, give me a shout. Okay. All right. Thank you.